For the last image in this series of tutorials on textures and layering, I've got a photo of a, an Irish lake with a peat bog in the foreground. And I've applied in Photoshop a watercolor and a texturizer uh, filters to get this uh, sort of painterly approach. So let's back up and see what this looks like without any of the modifications. This is the original photo. It's got the uh, peat bog here and uh, a sort of a dramatic sky. And it's, it's pretty nice by itself, but I just wanted to play around with it and see what I could do to give it, as I say, a more painterly effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn back on the watercolor layer. I'm going to turn off the texturizer so we can see just the effect of the watercolor. As usual, I've applied this as I've turned this layer into a smart filter or a smart object so that when I apply filters, they are applied as smart filters. And what this allows me to double click on the layer and I'll just okay this so, and it brings me right back into the filter uh, that I, and I can readjust the parameters and change them in any way. Now you'll notice that in here this looks quite a bit different than it did on the, on the image we were just looking at and the reason is because I found this uh, effect to be too strong so I'm going to cancel out of here and just show you that I, I reduced the opacity and this is something you can always do if, if you find the effect is too strong and sometimes the, the this is the only way to, to work with it. So I've dialed it back to 30% as you can see. If I increase this all the way up to 100% then I'm seeing the same thing that we were just seeing inside the uh, filters. But I'm going to cancel out of here and that'll leave it at 30% and I'm going to double click on this, go back in and then we'll see. I just want to briefly show you the options in the watercolor filter. You have this brush detail option. I have it up pretty high and when you have it up higher that gives you a more photorealistic effect and when you turn it way down that gives you more of a processed effect. So I liked it pretty far up, uh, say 13 or maybe 14 I guess is the max, somewhere in there. This, sh this shadow intensity, this is very powerful and it becomes in fact overpowering and I didn't want really any of that. I turned it all the way down. The texture, uh, again, this can be a little bit strong. It was too strong for my taste, at least for what I was going for. As, as always, this is subjective and it depends on what kind of a look you're after. So I just left these two dialed pretty far down. I set brush detail for pretty far up. And that's all I had to do with the to get a bit of a watercolor effect. At 30% opacity, we get this sort of a look. It has just a mild painterly overlay effect. Then the next thing I did, oh, oh, by the way, and this kind of darkened it down, so I added this curves adjustment layer to kind of punch up the oh, after effect again. And then finally I added a texturizer effect. So I'm going to turn that on, and this is a little bit hard to see. In fact, I need to zoom in, because as you can tell here, I'm at 78% zoom level. If I zoom into 100%, uh, let me just pan over. You can actually see the texture a lot better. And in fact, whenever you're applying textures, you normally want to be looking at them at 100% uh, to see how it's really going to look. You want to be thinking in terms of what your out final output is going to be. If it's going to be output to the web, then you need to have your image sized for that. And when you're applies, applying your texture, uh, you want to apply it at, you want to be looking at it at 100% view. And similarly, if you're going to print, well then it gets even more complicated. You want to look at it at 100%, but at the same time printing will change it, so the only way to really evaluate that is to print and then see how it looks. But anyway, um, let's have a look at this. So that you can see here, I've, I've applied a texturizer uh, with a canvas effect, and you can kind of see through these more solid areas of color the, uh, the texture coming through. So let's go in, in there, and I want to double click on that. And here we are again, and we're seeing the texture effect. I've chosen the canvas option in texturizer. There are several options, uh, brick, and here you can very clearly see a, a brick sort of effect. Uh, burlap effect, sandstone effect. This one can be very nice uh, for a subtle sort of uh, uh, approach. I've used the canvas. I've kept the scale. I've adjusted the scaling. Depending on where you set this, you get a diff very different look. And it, this all depends on the size of your image relative to the scaling uh, of the uh, canvas or the whatever material you, you've chosen. This is uh, obviously way too big for this image, so I found something down around 60%. Uh, 70% to be more appropriate. And this relief uh, 
you can see how, what this does is I turn this up. It gives uh, more of an embossed or etched sort of appearance. And I, I didn't want that much. So I changed it. And I left it down pretty low. In fact, I think I was at 2 for a more subtle effect. And then you can also change the uh, source of the light. From I've, I've chosen top right, but you could choose any of the options that are provided here if, it, if you feel it makes a difference. So I'm going to say OK to that. And then I've, uh, again, with the opacity, you can always dial that down if you want. I've left it at 100%. And that's uh, pretty much how I created this image.